as with everything in math, there has to be a spin once you just get excited that you've figured out how to do something. So this one, the spin is, I'm going to add another variable. Does it make it any harder? No. Does it appear harder? Yes, of course it does. So here what I've got is I've got X's and I've got Y's. And so I noticed that the leading uh, coefficient for X squared is not 1, so we need to find the factors of 3. So my X factors are going to be for 3. So I'm going to have 1 times 3. And then for my Y, I need to look for factors of 4. So we've got 1 times 4 and 2 times 2. Okay, I've got that, but now I can't remember what am I supposed to do. Oh, that's right. I need to look at the signs. And so this plus on the right tells me the signs are the same. And they're both going to be negative. So both are negative. Now, what in the world are they going to add up to? Well, they're going to add up to 13. So where can I find something that's going to add up to 13? Well, I know that 3 times 4 is 12. 1 times 1 is 1, and 12 plus 1 is 13. Now, I've got to figure out, remember we said this has got two terms. I've got x's and I've got y's. So I know that I'm going to have to have x's and y's. Now we said that the x terms are going to be a 3 and a 1. So I've got a 3 and then I've got a 1, which is understood. If you want to put the 1 there, kind of makes you happy, you can do that to begin with. Now we said the 3 has to go with a 4. So the 3 has to go with a 4. And we said a 1 and a 1. So there's my 1 and my 1. Now up here we said the signs were the same. They're both going to be minus. So I would normally rewrite this so it looks a little prettier, like I wasn't, I don't know, something wasn't happening when I was actually doing the problem. And that's it.